John McWhorter, I can't boil down as perfectly as I wish. I just rewatched his debate. I we I watched his debate and a, and another thing, um, a speech at like Berkeley somewhere called, by like a socialist uh, professor that was like about how wokeism doesn't accomplish what it's supposed to, um, sure. and basically how like her her main point I think was that the majority of like of black Americans don't seem to like statistically don't seem to really identify with progressivism in some of the ways that it expresses itself. Mm -hmm. John McWhorter's thing is more like what I just laid out. He's like these ideas about these ideas about these ideas about certain privileges and certain uh, ways that we talk about race and how we mean to address it, mm -hmm. it is a religious belief and that it like is missing the mark and that it isn't accomplishing anything that actually is helping black Americans out. And his big thing is like that Jesus, I just don't want to, I don't want to say too much. I'd rather share the debate with you, but his thing is that um, if we look at the issue of, basically race relations through a lens that is uh, religious that we're not aware of. If we are practicing this cognitive dissonance that we're not aware of, that's where we're doing the damage because we're not able to have the type of constructive or beneficial conversations about where we go from here mm. that we need to have if we're doing it with by excluding certain information. Fair enough. Then um, what do you think about representation? What do I think about representation? Meaning like sort of what comes to mind. Fair enough. Like, so let's talk about media representation. Most of the time people don't tend to care that much about who um, who is in office as far as their, their skin color. I mean, some people do, um, but that's always a subset, subset of people. Like more people are, pay attention to entertainment. So I'm talking about entertainment. Mm -hmm. You have... Um, a black Superman say, mm -hmm. right? Um, that I've seen, I've seen people go nuts because a, a historically white character will be race changed. Yeah. Um, and because under the banner of representation. Yeah. Right. Or I'll see platforms like Hulu or, Netflix or or Prime boost to the top things about like Black or Latinx uh, creators. Um, what do you think about that? Well, I think a lot of things. Um, let's see. First, I will say representation. My first thought is is that I respond positively to it sometimes. Like I don't know if you know this, but. I'm quarter Cuban. Okay. And that's something that I really like about my background, like mm -hmm. that my grandmother's Cuban. And there's this comedian I like who's Cuban. And the fact that he's Cuban adds to the reason that I like him. It's mm. just like this glimpse into that part of my identity. Sure. And so it, he gives him this leg up from other, other comedians. Um, and when I think about like, I don't know, when, when there's debates about gender and stuff and we think about women participating in fields that have usually been mostly made up of men. Mm -hmm. I respond positively to that the same way that I do men being in fields that have usually been mostly made up of women. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to media, like what we're talking about, okay, here's a, here's, here's a good one. It depends. I think sometimes it lands as, as like a representation of virtue for a particular company or just like a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Like when creativity I think when it, I guess the best way to say it is when I get the sense that I'm watching like political statements be made through art, mm -hmm. then I, I consider that pandering in a way or consider it sort of like, uh, lazy, lazier or something. When you compare like, um, I don't know, like the all, the all female Ghostbusters movie mm -hmm. and, and I never saw it, but like just the idea that they need to remake that mm -hmm. compared to say what they've done with Spider-Man or what they've done with black Panther. Mm -hmm. These movies, I don't see those. I don't, those don't feel like, like political language is being expressed at all. They just feel like creative language. Mm -hmm. Whereas I will admit like something like the ghostbusters thing. I think it's like the fact that it wasn't a more original creation and mm -hmm. it was just like, 
we're gonna we're gonna pull out the tradi- the male characters and put in the female characters feels a little more like well I think it would just be more interesting if if it was like a a new story uh, I think that that's the way I've heard it expressed by some people and I think I sometimes I feel that way about some shit okay so I would say that like if we want to talk about gender or gender theory, I think a gender theory a person, a gender theorist would say it's interesting that society fixated on Ghostbusters being an all female production um, with those same arguments. Not that those arguments don't exist for other things, for other, like there are three little women's mm-hmm. right. Or there are, um, I mean, it's not that I haven't heard the criticism about how many Batman movies there are, you know, it's just that one of those things we have, one of one of those areas we consider a matter of course and we highlight others. Why do we seem to care or pay attention to an all female cast and why does that have disproportionate um, negativity towards it? Um, versus other bad movies versus other bad remakes and the like, right? That's what I feel like a gender theorist might say, right? Mm -hmm. Because in most cases, the thing is the fact that they're women. Now, there are two ways that you can go with that for me. There is the, the yours, the reaction to what you feel like are politically motivated reasons. To which I say, fair enough. If you want to talk about media during the hype, uh, during the height of the Me Too movement, then Ghostbusters is there. And if you want to think about that as a cynical cash grab from the studio, um, you want to think about that as like a badly written movie that they feel like that was just happened to be part of that narrative and that was hollow and cheap. Cool. But that's that's not representative of the entire the entire amount of pushback and in that wave you had people calling leslie jones a gorilla you had all of this other stuff and so you have this vitriol as being a vehicle for much darker um elements yeah to it and so whenever you whenever someone on my side talks about that it's not just about the ability to criticize some things or others it's the type of criticism and what that ushers right the idea that even though speech, this is where we sort of started, even though speech is free, it's really, really powerful and therefore not benign. Mm -hmm. And so what is the consequence of fallout of certain types of speech in certain arenas, right? And so the benefits of representation, a bunch of, you know, women came together and made a bad movie. I hope they make shit tons more bad movies because I think that the representation uh, and them being present in the industry will allow for more good female, all casted female, like Euphoria. Like, let's talk about female content I love. Let's Fleabag, um, Euphoria. Um, I mean, there there are tons of there's tons of content out there. But you, we never really talk about that because we always end up, you know, go. I mean, this, Ghostbusters came out in 2016. It's very telling that, you know, like that still ends up being a topic of conversation, even though shitty movies have come out since. Like, to me, much more egregious than Ghostbusters was for the last Fantastic Four movie. Uh-huh. Nobody talks about that, um, even though to me it was, you know. <sighs> I, I love Fantastic Four. I'm sorry. That's just, that's Marvel's first family. I fuck with them. <laughs> um, or Suicide Squad. Yeah. Right? Which was, to me, worse than, wor- because at least at times, Channing Tatum was funny in Ghostbusters 2016. Mm-hmm. There was, a, I think, in my opinion, the first Suicide Squad was the most joyless thing that I've seen in a long time. Um, So why do we fixate in certain directions versus others? Well, you know, I mean, honestly, I think there's something, 
this is going to be sticky and it's probably and my, I'm I've never really expressed these ideas out loud so I don't know how well this is going to come out but mm. for me often art that works I mean way 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 back art that works tends to not always but often represent a harmony between like masculine and feminine and especially I think in story form mm-hmm. like in movie world I think that's usually how it goes now what people take issue with it seems is the fact that the masculine characters are 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 off, often uh th- that role is is filled by men and the feminine characters are filled by women mm-hmm. in like traditional story form so you can think of like Lion King or you could think of Legends of the Fall or mm-hmm. you could think of a thousand other movies sure uh that the story centers around the problems of the female, the problems of the male, and the way that they kind of like navigate that world and either find harmony with each other or sometimes maybe it doesn't result in them finding harmony. And the, the sad truth of the story is that in this situation, they did not find harmony sure. with each other. I think the reason that gender gets brought up in, in this realm, like uh, we, we could probably come up with a couple other examples of of at least... Some of them that have got past me, but I, I just like have seen people criticize certain movies, and we're all aware of what happens when, as people have like kind of expressed a distaste for a lot of these movies mm-hmm. uh, that maybe represent what some people would call either wokeness or progressivism or some kind of agenda. I think that like with with some of these examples, there's a real sort of like this movie is about femininity, sort of like taking the uh taking the forefront and putting masculinity in the in the in the back of the picture okay and i think that is understandable to express when like your perception of the world is that that masculinity usually has precedence over femininity but i think in the rules of art and the rules of storytelling Mm -hmm. i think that's why it doesn't feel good usually because Mm -hmm. like it's breaking the rule of what the harmony represents so i'm tickled that you you went down masculinity and femininity because (laughs) god me and john had that conversation years ago oh yeah um, there's there's some things that be had but let's so it really just depends on your media man like you know we talked about women-centric things and i'm really embarrassed that i forgot to talk about like atomic blonde and um the witcher and you know all and even like Black Widow, as much as you, you know, whatever you feel like about that movie, like that movie was very driven um, by, by women. Um, and I feel like women that embody whatever you would consider a masculine energy. Um, but so when we talk about masculine and feminine energy, I, I just. I understand the utility of the framing. Mm-hmm. I just don't have any use for it mm. um, because it's something that I feel like that's part of our um, our Christian programming from at least here. I think um, because there's nothing except for historical precedent as far as like the way that power structures and in, in certain societies function, um, and the fact that there's no difference between a male and a female brain. Um, that that those those aspects of ourselves should be polar. I just see a lot of woo around the fact that like polarity exists. So like masculine and feminine are true when spectrums also exist. And we it's just it seems to be a useful frame for some people. Um, but it's just not backed by sociology or any type of real rigorous study in any type of meaningful way for me to 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 it's it's a it's a story it's a it's a frame and again i understand it it's just not one i buy i hear that i mean i do know that men and women are more alike you know than they are different uh, broadly speaking um i do think on a psychological level they do like have some pretty major differences at least from the people i've heard that are supposed to be authorities on this issue like 
whether they're aggressive or not, uh, the, the degree to which they're aggressive compared to the, the degree to which they're maybe agreeable or shit like that. But I'm not denying any of that. I'm, yeah. de- I'm talking about the labeling of certain um, traits being masculine and feminine. Yeah, I hear that for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it is. Yeah, it's a it's it's something that belongs, I guess, to us. I mean, I think there's like. It is just a it's a way to categorize observations, you know, like the same way that I think like female lions are the ones that do most of the hunting and the men, the male lions like do a lot of the roaring and ass kicking or whatever. I think like we observe behaviors in our in our species as well. And then we like ass- assign those in some ways to th- the categories that they most usually belong to or have traditionally, according to the way that we've organized things. Right. And so we have to figure out if those structures are useful to us. Mm-hmm. That's the, I mean, that's this whole idea of conservatism and progressivism is conservatism tends towards the traditional and the progressivism tends towards deconstruction. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I am only interested in, oh, well, I'm interested in deconstruction. I mean, if you want to talk about the way I look at drums, you know, if we want to tie this all the way back to my like how I view music and, and what inspires me, it's when people take non-traditional things or repurpose traditional things in interesting ways. Yeah, I like subversive deconstructionist media from movies to a um, huge anime fan, music, anything like that usually grabs my interest. I'm, I have very little interest in musical traditions at, on just by themselves. I am interested in what they can teach us, but I am always thinking about theft. I'm always thinking about stealing something that I like to repurpose, not bowing to the gods of the past. 